Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. And I got to start with this because I keep seeing people all over X saying, that the U.S. is not going to have a CBDC. He says this while pushing eyes on Bitcoin. They plan to rug Bitcoin. Some see it, some don't. They want you looking everywhere but XRP. You take notice to that? The mainstream media news does not want you looking at XRP or any of these cryptocurrencies that are going to be part of the new financial system. All the focus right now in crypto is on bitcoin michael sailor's calling for a 13 million dollar bitcoin it's like the biggest distraction out there but it's some people are smart enough to get their money invested in the disruption which is xrp and when trump says he's not gonna implement a cbdc that that's the only path forward for the united states the world is going digital, and I said this multiple times. They might not call it a CBDC, but we are going towards digital money. We will have a digital dollar. So here are the latest statistics on cryptocurrency-based adoption by country. The global adoption of crypto has rocketed and will continue to accelerate in 2024. Absolutely. I think once crypto starts to really take off, we are going to watch people flood into this space like never before on the fear of missing out. There's going to be so many new crypto investors in this space in the coming months, but they're going to be paying much higher prices for XRP than what we're paying right now. But it's strange because only 4% of the world population holds crypto. That's how early you actually are. Wait until crypto is talked about everywhere and accepted everywhere as a form of payment. World Economic Forum Managing Director says, Beyond carbon taxes, let's think about other aspects of nature that are easier to quantify. What about water? Anything that can be taxed will be taxed. This is fiat reality, where there's no end to greed and corruption. You thought climate change is all about carbon credits. Think again. We're dealing with control freaks. It's going to go far beyond carbon credits. They're going to tokenize everything around us. The World Economic Forum says it's going to be an $867 trillion market by 2030. And eventually, they are going to tokenize people. No matter what their policy says, the company and its data can be sold and the policy can change. Now they will monetize it all. That doesn't sound good. Blackstone to acquire Ancestry.com for $4.7 billion, giving investment firm total ownership of all DNA from every person who's ever used the service. Most likely, they're going to tokenize that DNA. But think about if they want to tokenize people, because I'm sure that Huvo Navari already has a plan for that as well. But it would start with a digital ID. This would be tied to every aspect of your life, your work history, your health records. And maybe they give you incentives for having a good work history or a good health history. Maybe you get a, a bigger carbon credit allotment every single month. Who knows? But this is the direction that the World Economic Forum is pushing in. Now, digital identity most likely will be in the form of something like a driver's license early on. But eventually, they want to put a chip in you. Don't get the chip. Even if it keeps you from spending or selling your XRP, never take the chip. 
But this is the plan that they've had all along. And you were watching this pick up traction now as well, all of a sudden. Did you ever wonder why XRP will win against Bitcoin? It's because XRP is top down and Bitcoin is bottom up. Take a listen to David Schwartz. And while Bitcoin is bottom up, if you look at the Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi's very first blockchain, he said peer-to-peer -peer digital cash, which seems to be focused on that sort of real-world retail payments. Um, and my answer is eventually yes, but maybe never directly on a blockchain because of those scalability issues, maybe through layer two scaling systems like, like Lightning or layer three scaling like Interledger. I think that's the obvious use case, but, but I'll tell you why I think that the, it's the wrong way to look at crypto to say, like, is it ready for that? If you look at, let's say, the growth of the internet, or even if you look at the growth of physical goods transport, like, it's, like physical goods transport, so it was shipping containers and it was, um, it was trucks. These are not retail delivery things, right? If you look at the internet, it was the military, it was universities, and then it was big information providers. Like these are not really retail information cases. I think we have to have a mature ecosystem before we can target those retail systems. I'm not a big believer in the bottom-up strategy. I know this, this separates me from many, many other people in the space. And I don't think they're wrong to try it. I wish them all the luck in the world. If they're successful, that's great. But I think like, if you look at the history of, of the way similar technologies have developed, that bottom-up strategy is going to be limited to a small number of enthusiasts. Like, Look at the internet. The internet was limited to a small number of enthusiasts who were willing to edit DOS batch files and use non-graphical tools until it reached a certain point where there were major information service providers. American Airlines had a website, you know, and they had graphical tools and like it was mature. But, it's, but no one's going to build a mature ecosystem for nothing in the expectation that at some future point it'll be ready for retail adoption. Like you need a path to get there. So the path to get there for XRP is institutional adoption which we're about to see happen at a very big level once we get crypto regulations. Then that will flow into retail because institutional adoption will eventually lead to mass adoption. Now, when it comes to Bitcoin, I think David, who is actually Satoshi, most likely started bottom up and then said, hey, this isn't going to work. Let's go on and create something top down. So then they created XRP. But Bitcoin is never going to succeed against XRP over time. It's eventually going to become irrelevant. Like I always told you, the only thing really holding up Bitcoin is the belief that it's going to go higher in price and that it's never going to come back down or go to zero. Now, once Tether eventually loses its peg, which I'm sure that's also part of the plan to clear the way for more regulated stable coins. And we start to see Bitcoin plummet with Tether. All of a sudden, the belief will be gone, the hype will be gone, and the smart money in Bitcoin will also be gone. And all that's going to be left in there is retail investors holding the bag. But I don't understand the idea of retail investors even wanting to invest in Bitcoin. I mean, what are you planning to get in this next run up? Maybe a three to five X? You could easily get that in any cryptocurrency out there right now. Put your money in XRP. Most likely we're going to see a 20, 30 X. Other cryptocurrencies might pull a hundred X. Who knows? XRP might pull a hundred X. You know, I'm thinking we're still going to hit at least $27 once alt season begins. IBM says by 2028, most homes will have a quantum computer just in time for the next four year cycle in crypto. Wonder if Michael Saylor planned for this and his wonderful $13 million per Bitcoin speeches. Now, I remember talking about this in another video. And the World Economic Forum right now is pushing for quantum proof in blockchain. They want blockchain to become quantum proof. So why are they all of a sudden rushing that? I think it's because quantum computers are way more advanced already than what we even know. Most likely, they're already using them in the background. And eventually it will hit the retail market. First, it will hit the institutional market and commercial market. 
then all of a sudden it'll be put in phones and so on because that's how technology advances remember when you used to have when the beginning of hd tv started high definition then all of a sudden it transformed into 4k then it went to 8k and it's still evolving even still today same thing's going to happen with quantum computers and the XRP ledger is not quantum resistant. This comes from David Schwartz. It could be made so, but with the present mechanisms we have, the result would kind of suck because the quantum resistant algorithms we know of all have painful disadvantages in blockchain applications. So he's saying that they will cross that bridge once they have to. For now, the XRP ledger is not quantum resistant, though. But I don't think Bitcoin is ever going to become quantum resistant. And that's going to be a problem going forward as well. Neom delays IPO plans in the United States. We just watched the same thing happen with Ripple. And Neom is a Ripple partner. So they're delaying it now until 2026. Most likely, Ripple will go in that same direction. Unless we get a clear path forward and we have changes at the U.S. SEC. I think once Gary go Gary's gone, I think all of a sudden we'll see a lot of things change in the United States with crypto. And then somebody sent me this, Frogger, XRP.ag. So this is an email he got from eToro we are writing to inform you that due to the regulatory environment from september 11th eToro users based in the united states will only be able to open buy new crypto positions in the following three crypto assets bitcoin bitcoin cash and ethereum it will not be possible for u.s consumers customers to open new positions in any other crypto assets. So why only those three assets? Why are they limiting people to what they can buy in the United States? And take notice, they are limiting people from buying ISO cryptocurrencies as well. Like I said, they want everyone focused on the distraction. Americans lost $5.6 billion last year in cryptocurrency fraud scams, the FBI says. And that's why I'm always pointing out these scams. You know, the fake Brad Garlinghouse and fake Chris Larson videos that play on YouTube where they want to double your XRP holdings. Those are all scams. But you know, whenever they put out articles like this, they also try to keep the normies from getting involved with crypto. They don't want new investors coming into crypto. They want these people putting their money in their bank account week over week and putting their money into savings accounts. They don't want people pulling away from the broken banking system. Discounter, big lots, filed for bankruptcy. More and more people are pinching pennies and often big lots, which advertises itself as extreme deals, was the, wasn't the best deal compared to other retailers. Like I keep telling you, we are in recession. You know, they always try to use that word like, if we don't do this, we're going to slip into a recession. It's like the Fed already knows what they're going to do. They just have to sell it on the mainstream media news but it's big lots it's the dollar stores they're all starting to just come crashing down and i think the problem with it is that anything brick and mortar doesn't seem to have a future look at the malls most of the malls are ghost towns now i'm surprised the doors are even open at most malls but everything seemed to move online ever since covid it really picked up I mean, look at Amazon stock. But people like that convenience as well. They pick up their phone and they're sitting there watching TV or whatever. And they're just scrolling to, through and they're like, oh, I need this. Let me buy this. And it shows up at your door next day or within two days. 
People like the convenience of that. It's the same reason that we're going to see more and more adoption of RippleNet technology and XRP. Because what does it do? It makes payments faster, cheaper, and secure. And that's what people want. They want everything to be fast today. That's why SWIFT needs to partner up with Ripple or SWIFT will disappear over time. But, you know, we're crypto investors. We're XRP investors. No matter what happens going forward, we are going to get rich. All we got to do is wait for it to happen. And until it does happen, stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.